What I want to do here is integrate a little bit of what we've learned about reflexes in the past with the autonomic nervous system in terms of motor response. So both sensory and motor here, right? If you have a reflex, you know it's both sensory and motor. So I want to show you a diagram here. I showed you something similar to this with a monosynaptic and a polysynaptic comparison. This is showing autonomic reflex. How do we know that? Couple of key, well, one key thing, the one key thing is this, right? If we have an autonomic ganglion, if we have any ganglion in the motor division, it is an autonomic reflex. Um, it's autonomic, right? Um, so that's one way we know. Typically, when we're looking at autonomic reflex, we're looking at autonomic in sensory. So this would be a, in a visceral or autonomic sensory division. And this is, of course, our ANS. I'm just gonna call it that motor. This looks exactly like a reflex that we saw with the somatic nervous system, except for this ganglion. Ganglia, autonomic ganglia are the only location of cell bodies that carry efferent information outside of the central nervous system. So what would this stimulus be? It might be something in the viscera, it's a visceral reflex. Where does the sensory information come from? It comes from the viscera. So there are exceptions to that in terms of like internal you know, visceral reaction. So the heart, um, the intestines, there's also some in the, the eyes, for example, sensory receptors in the viscera. So this could be heart, intestines, there are pupillary reflexes, other eye blink reflexes, things like that, smooth muscles in various locations. And these are called these sensory receptors that detect internal stimuli are called interoceptors. So this is a type of receptor that's inside the body. This is in contrast to exteroreceptors. Talk more about different types of sensory receptors next week, um, next lecture week. I just wanna bring this up because this is the type of receptor. So this would be the specific type of receptor that's detecting these autonomic stimuli. This, just like your other sensory systems, just like your other reflexes, this information is carried to the central nervous system. For example, the spinal cord could be the brain. And then output, motor output. In this case, that motor output is an autonomic reflex. So this means that it is unconscious, just like another reflex, but it's also an autonomic target cell. So this target cell would be something like the heart, all these same right viscera, smooth muscles. Um, that is in contrast to the knee jerk reflex, which is still automatic, but it's not autonomic because it's skeletal muscle that's responding. Okay, one example here. This is the beginning of your chapter that you read for this week, an example of an autonomic reflex here. We've got one piece of anatomy I wanna introduce here is the carotid artery. This is the artery that goes from your aorta of your heart up to the brain. So it's a very important artery because it allows blood to go to your brain. So there are special detectors here. Um, detectors, meaning sensors, meaning receptors. They are called baroreceptors. These are going to detect pressure. What kind of pressure do you think? Blood pressure. And then we'll do a little bit more sensory next le lecture set. The point is receptor. They're detecting high or low blood flow. Let's go with high. So let's say there's high blood pressure. 
they detect that. They respond to that stretch actually. Um, and they're going to transmit that information via a sensory nerve to the brain. So this is going to be our input signal here, a sensory neuron. It actually is the glossopharyngeal nerve, a cranial nerve. We then have, what do you think this is going on here? We've got integration. I don't know why there's not a number for that. We're gonna do um, just a star here. This is our integrator. It's actually the um, medulla, which you know the medulla, right? Controls things like blood pressure, respiratory rate. The medulla detects, I'm sorry, doesn't detect, receives the information about low blood, high or low blood pressure, in this case high, and decides to respond to that. So we need to respond. That is going to be an output signal. So this is a motor neuron. What type of motor neuron? Autonomic. And specifically, what do you think? Right, autonomic first. If we want, we've got the stimulus is increased blood pressure. We're gonna want the parasympathetic nervous system to respond. This is actually our vagus nerve that um, innervates a whole lot of your abdominal and thoracic viscera. It's going to stimulate, I'm sorry, inhibit the heart. So send inhibitory signals. Here's our intramural ganglion here in order to decrease heart rate. That is one mechanism by which to decrease blood pressure. The rationale for that, if it doesn't quite make sense, that will do in second semester of AMP. So it's more an example, right? Um, this is a feedback loop. This is a negative feedback. Yeah. And it's one that uses autonomic input and autonomic output. So autonomic reflex.